All right, this time we'll uh, go for this school board meeting at Tippecanoe Valley School Board of Trustees with all members present except Mr. Miller. Superintendent Mr. Boggs, uh, Assistant Superintendent Mr. Conley, Recording Secretary Jessica McFarland, and our student representatives. We have one tonight and two next week, right? There you go. That's our goal. <laughs> at this time, we'll upcoming board meetings, August the 18th, 2016, budget workshop, the administration office at 6.30 p.m. On September the 12th, 2016, the regular meeting at the Minton Elementary School at 6.30 p.m. October the 10th, 2016, the regular meeting at the Minton Elementary at 6.30 p.m. And on November the 14th, 2016, the regular meeting at Minton Elementary at 6.30 p.m. At this time, I'll turn it over to Mr. Boggs to spotlight on the ballot. Yes, we have several of our new teachers here tonight that we'd like to welcome and uh, introduce to the board. I think we'll start in the back row there with Mr. Donald Stone. And uh, Don, if you would uh, introduce yourself, tell us what you're doing for us now, and uh, a little bit about who you are. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Don Stone. Uh, I have the new uh, eighth grade special education teacher at the middle school. Um, I'm got my lovely wife here in Carbondale. We have eight children. Um, most of you probably know if you haven't already. I'm a retired Marine, so. Really looking forward to coming back home from there. It's like my old school system. I love it here, so thanks for having me. Did you say eight? Yes, sir, eight. <laughs> yes, wow. <laughs> She's a very godly woman. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Tina? Tina Berg? Hi, I'm Tina Berg. Um, I am the new eighth grade math teacher over at Tippecanoe Valley School little bit about me and Mary I have a son who just graduated high school and I really have enjoyed the first day in class but I also like the camaraderie and the community of the feel of the community it's a nice place to be now Tina you gotta tell these guys where you live and I want to see how many of them know where that is I live in Grover Town it's um, 45 minutes north west of the middle school Mike Welcome, Tim. Glad you're here. You. Mr. Jones, Mike. Mike Jones. This is my wife, Lacey, which teaches here at Benton. This is one of our daughters, and we're not quite as prolific as they are. <laughs> <laughs> we have three others that all attend here at Benton, and I am the agriculture teacher and FFA advisor. Well, that is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have four to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are they all, all girls? One boy. One boy. That's what I think it is. Still a lot of estrogen. It's only going to get worse. We got five of them. Okay. And um, Precious Brenton. Um, hi, my name is Precious Brenton. This is my first year teaching. I just graduated from Grace College. I student taught at Whitco, and I really just love the the community there and the small town feel of it and Tippy Valley was just exactly what I was looking for. So and I really like dogs. All right, this time I uh will do the second like one there too. Oh. Tippy Valley Names of 2016 Distinguished Alumni and Legacy Awards. And uh, we just named those folks. I asked uh, our Director of Marketing Public Relations, the great writing, Cassie Jensen, to come in and share a little bit with you tonight about that. So, Cassie. All right, so we're honoring quite a few people. We're honoring five distinguished alumni, the first being Greg Gibble, the class of 78. We have Scott Bibbler, the class of 82, Mindy Truex, 83, Tim Dowd, 88, and Lisa Fear, 96. And we'll also be honoring four, um, four people with the Legacy Award, the first being Ann Allen, um, the class of 52, who graduated from Akron High School, Tim Harmon, the class of 72 at Minto High School, Lee Norris, uh, the class of 47 at Beaver Dam High School, and Norman Wagoner, the class of 55 at Tolma High School. And um, these people have three things in common. They've each lived very successful lives since they graduated. Um, they've contributed substantially to their chosen field of work and they've provided outstanding service to either our community, our state, or our nation. And so we're going to honor those people um, with a two-day celebration um, 
on Thursday, September 15th at 6.30, we're going to have a dinner recognizing and honoring them um, to which the community and their families are invited. And then um, on induction day, which will be Friday, September 16th, um, they will spend the morning and the lunchtime with students talking with them and kind of just getting to know them and sharing a little bit about their lives in the afternoon. Um, Rochester Telephone Company will come in and do an interview with them. And then in the evening, they'll be introduced at the high school football game and presented with a plaque for their, um, for their awards. Thank you, Cassie. That board has gotten out to uh, the papers and so forth, so we'll see. Any questions? Is the, the inductees, is that a new, is that something new this year? The Legacy Award. Legacy, Legacy Award. Award. Last year was the first we, uh, Okay, we had Don Craig. Okay. Our first one. And we'd had um, different people along the way ask, well, why don't you recognize the Akron and the Midtone, the Beaver Dam, the Burkett, Talbot people? And so we decided, you know, let's, let's do that. And so we kind of tried it last year, worked out pretty well. And this year we had uh, several, several long days. Thank you, Cassie. That is it. That's it? Yep. All right, we'll move to item C. Items from the visitors. Do we have any items from the visitors? They had a long day today. They had a long day. <laughs> sure. yeah, I think they just resigned. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> All right, hearing none, we'll go to item D approval of the consent agenda. Item one, approve the minutes of the July 11, 2016 regular meeting and executive session. Item two, Approve the hiring of the following personnel. Michael Jones, agricultural teacher and FFA sponsor at Tiffany Valley High School. Tina Bird, mathematics teacher at Tiffany Valley Middle School. Donald Stone, special ed teacher at Tiffany Valley Middle School. Precious Brenton, mathematics teacher at Tiffany Valley Middle School. Wayne Landis, mathematics teacher at Tiffany Valley Middle School. April Loving, instructional assistant at Tiffany Valley High School. Kathy Roush, Roush. Roush. instructional assistant at Tiffany Valley High School. Sarah Shepard, instructional assistant at Mintone Elementary. And Martha Clapp, custodian at Mintone Elementary. Item three, accept the resignation of the following personnel. Kyle Wood, ag teacher, Tiffany Valley High School. Paula Spalski, instructional assistant, Tiffany Valley High School. Billy Shrill, Sorrel, Sorrel, Tiffany New Valley Cook at Tiffany Valley Middle School, Alicia Rutherford, Cook at Mintone Elementary, Andrea Rudisel, fifth grade volleyball, Akron Elementary, and Lindsay Oosley, seventh grade volleyball, Tiffany Valley Middle School. Item four, approve the 2016-2017 teaching assignments. Item five, approve the 2016-17 extracurricular assignments. And item six, approve the 2016-17 all-year driver education program. Is there anything the board would like to pull out? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? I'll make that motion. Tom makes a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Is there a second? I'll put the vote. Todd seconds so that. All in favor of approving the consent agenda as read, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of claims and payroll. Okay. We have one pre-written claim listing this evening. It's dated July 31, 2016, in the amount of $806,992.75. <clears throat> Our regular claim listing is dated August 8, 2016, in the amount of $326,604.32. Then we have two payrolls this evening. The first is dated July 8, 2016, is in the amount of $332,811.65. The second is dated July 22 of 2016, in the amount of $324,957.70. Submit the claims and payroll for your approval. Board, have any questions on the claims and payrolls? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve claims and payrolls as read? I'll make that motion. Ryan makes a motion to approve the claims and papers read. There a second. Tom second. Tom second. 
All in favor of claim, approving the claims and payrolls as read, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Financial report. Okay. You have uh, the reconciled bank statement and monthly financial report of funds for July 2016. Uh, summary of our receipts and disbursements are uh, total receipts for all funds $1,278,547.06. Total disbursements for all funds $1,671,426.11. Any questions on the financial report? Okay, we'll move to old business. Okay. Update on the Akron Elementary School project. And I believe that Mr. Bitterling is, that's not going to go there. Yes, he is. Is. Mr. Bitterling is here tonight to give us an update. So, Jim, what do you have for us? Well, I'll bring you up to date here on the what we've, uh, progress of uh, this past month. We were up on the uh, areas B and C, as far as the, all the excavation and backfill. All that has been completed up to uh, like minus 10 of the uh, finished floor area. Uh, as we build the uh, footings and foundations, we continue to fill around those, bring it up to uh, that level. But we left that area down to make it easier for digging of the footings. So uh, that's about all we have to do as far as the uh, fill and uh, round uh, all, all units, uh, B, C, and D. Uh, we've completed 90% uh, of uh, the uh, foundations, mainly just the footings. This time we have started the walls, port walls on the, I think we made our first port today on the, the east wall. Took it completely from the uh, unit D, east side, clear to the corner. Now, Jim, it's D, the, uh, is that the gymnasium? No, that's B. Okay. So it's the next section to the east end. Yeah, D okay. is the one to the uh, west and north. Okay. Yeah. That's where we're doing the footings. We'll get uh, unit B, all the footings and foundations uh, done except for the west uh, side of the stage. We're using that to uh, access, uh, get our lifts in that area so we can get up to the high walls. Uh, the walls there in the uh, gym area, they're two, 32 feet tall, so it takes a little bit of room to get around there. And I, I know we're kind of crowding up her a little bit, but getting along fine, I think. So uh, we're about 95% on uh, Unit B there, the foundation I, I just mentioned, the, the west side of that. We've completed the uh, gym slab uh, there on grade. I think you maybe had some pictures of that, but yeah, we can look at them here in a bit. Yeah, uh, that's right. the only floors we poured was the gym at this time. And they needed to get that poured because they braced the uh, walls off of the floor. They need to brace them high walls. That, that, that's about half of the floor poured right there that you can see in that picture. That's the uh, south half you're looking at that's poured. And you can see the uh, Viz Queen and wire down on the north half of it. So. But that was all poured in one day. We started about 7.30 in the morning and by 12.30 that floor was done. It set up very fast. Uh, we continued with the rough ends for electrical underground stuff and uh, you can see some up there, uh, plumbing, storm drains, that's interior of the building, which takes care of roof drains and sanitary drains throughout the uh, Unit B. Uh, we did start today on uh, storm in the uh, um, area between the, the D and the old building. Yeah, we still have some rough ends to do on Unit B, but that continues on as we, on a daily basis. Uh, the masonry has been, uh, is ongoing in B, and uh, uh, it's mostly B at this time. We uh, did complete the water tie-in to the uh, water main that goes around the perimeter of the site. We made a hot tap there and we got the water into the building and uh, checked it out today and uh, it looks good at this time. 
for the next uh, four weeks, we will complete uh, Area D foundations and uh, continue on with unit B slabs. <clears throat> that would include the boiler room, mechanical room, electrical room, and get the uh, kitchen areas. Uh, I think there's a cooler and freezer that goes in there, so that whole area will be poured here in this uh, next three or four weeks. Uh, uh, underground electrical is ongoing through that whole area. So that's about what we've uh, accomplished and what's been, what will be going on for the next the next month. So, uh, I guess have you showed all the pictures there? I think so. Thank you. So, he has some pictures of the completed slab. I think that's there, that second picture. <coughs> that looks, uh, yeah, that's the gym slab there that's completed. Uh, and there's some other pictures there. Uh, we're taken from the roof, kind of down on the, on the site where you can see a little bit more of Unit B. Did they figure out the uh, the, uh, the access drain that they they just done? It was still standing quite with yes. quite a bit of water. There's still about the same amount of water in there, and it's, I think that's where it's going to be. Uh, they figure out if they're going to put like some. I don't know if there's been a decision made or not. Oh. Yeah, we have three options that they presented, and I don't know where that's at. It hasn't been a decision made. I don't think. One of them was clay with uh, stone, just riprap stone all through there. Another one was pour a, a concrete bottom in it. And it seemed like there was a third option. But uh, we need to make a decision how we want to handle that. But it is going to be wet throughout, you know. So it'll be hard to mow and hard to maintain. And so the best thing to do would be fix it so we, you wouldn't have to mow it. Yeah. Either stone or concrete or something like that. So. Just to let you know, we do have a temporary fence around it right now, so for safety. For yeah. yeah, we did put some uh, fence around it, like to help out for uh, kids to go out and play in the grass area to the north. And, and we're still used, we have to use that east side parking lot for a, a while yet so we get that high gym wall done, just there's no other way. Well, with the kids out there, Jim, you won't be needed anymore. They can supervise the yeah, construction. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably right. <laughs> I'm were, sure they'll tell them how to do it. Well, they but, were yeah. recording yeah. things today to their teachers because Brandon came in and did a safety talk oh, okay. um, this morning and talked about the hard hats and what they needed to look for. And I guess they reported somebody didn't have a number on their hard hat. So they were letting him know. <laughs> I heard one little girl was concerned that they were going to lift up her room and take it away. They have lots of questions. So, yeah. 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 Any other questions? In the in the back area there, the uh, last week I drove in there, that was this all open to where I could actually drive right through the building yeah, site. It's not now. Good, okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure that yeah. was all secure. Yeah. It's all fenced in. and. Good. We got gates there. They're kind of hard to maintain. But yeah, we yeah. do have it all fenced off now. Yeah. Or okay. yeah. was that during the daytime? Yeah, it was during the day. It was one evening. I was had checked the pivots, and I was coming home. I, I'll drive in there. I went in, come in the back way there. Should I just drove right through the whole the whole site? And uh, I figured they'd do something yeah. before yeah. the kids. We was a little lax there during you know until school started, yeah. but it's all uh, fenced in yeah. now. So. When will some seals start going up, Jim? Uh, there's a little up right now, just what we have to have, and that's uh, on the uh, east side of the uh, stage area. But uh, probably two or three weeks yet before any amount of steel comes out. But, uh, the perimeter of Unit D is all uh, bearing, so you won't see much steel until you get a place to put the bar joists onto the uh, exterior walls. There won't be much steel going up yet, so. Were you able to get everybody parked today? This is nice. I 
Good. We got carved. We're all good. Everybody wants to be there early now, right? Yeah. <laughs> we um, use the back um, behind the gym, our current gym, and then um, behind the cafeteria in there. And then we um, kind of went along. We had the cooks, because they get there uh, after the buses drop off and they leave before the buses um, come again in the evening. So they parked around the curb, kind of um, not where the kids were playing, but I was able to get a few cars back there. So right now, um, we're okay. If I have a school event during the day or have people come in, it's going to get tight. You had an evening event last week. Yes, we did. It was. Yeah. We were packed, weren't we? They were parked all down. But they understood. We, I met with parents before. I let them go to the classrooms and uh, explain, you know, this is just how we're going to be for the next year. And um, they, I just asked them to have patience with us. And soon we'll have more parking. So. It's all said and done. Yeah. Every once in a while we'll have a, one of the community, some people drive in back here and uh, spend up there and watch for a little bit and see what's going on. So, what is it building? Yeah. So, how many, uh, do you have, how many masons do you have there on a typical day? Uh, there's Actually, about, uh, I think, a dozen in that crew, but there's they got a lot of labor, so there's a lot of uh, handwork, you know, because we can't really get a lift to every point. So. They got to put those block at one point, and they got to distribute them out down the, the scaffold by hand. So it's until yeah. we get away from there, it's, it's going to take longer. So they should finish that south wall uh, this week, uh, up to 32 feet. So, so there's yeah. poured walls and block walls. Yeah, is that right? There's so both. The poured walls are all uh, from footing to. Great. Uh, Block starts, uh, most of it starts at eight inches below yeah, finish rate. Right. And, yeah. and that's typical of a building like that size. Okay. Well, that's, so that's typical of a building that size. Yeah, that, it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you see it so that, that, We've had some nice weather. I mean, we haven't had a whole yeah. lot of. Sometimes rain. the core at one, 100 elevation, we always say, is is floor level so they have a little ledge there on the outside where the brick actually goes down another eight inches where you know you don't see any uh, concrete around the perimeter you see brick so boys put a ledge on the outside and, uh, the wall is a uh, brick a little airspace two inches of styrofoam and then eight inches of block on on unit D, it's eight inches. The gym is 12 inch wide box. Takes two men to handle those things. I said, you know, I'm not 50 pounds a piece. Yeah. 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 Thank you. You bet. Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, go to item two presentation on the Tippie Valley High School Middle School Press Box project. Mr. Conley and uh, Todd Glenn have taken the lead on this project and uh, asked Mr. Conley to give you a lead on where we are. Mr. Burkhart is also here and he's going to uh, fill in on uh, anything that I forget. Um, we, uh, our committee started this uh, process back on uh, December 16th. That was our first meeting. and. Uh, we're less than two weeks away from, from kickoff here um, at, uh, at at our location. So we kind of want to look at where where we were before and then where we are right now. So the, the next slide, um, you, you see the current uh, press box, uh, the obstructive view that uh, the folks inside there had, um, the uh, no storage in terms of that uh, particular press box. The uh, PA system was very outdated, and it was structurally uh, very worn. Uh, we we definitely got great use out of it, but uh, the the next slide is where we're at right now. Um, actually, last week, where this is where we were. You can see um, first off, uh, looking at the the seamless glass in the front. That's uh, I got some good pictures that we'll show you here. But that's that's a, a great thing that. Uh, Miller Construction really uh, wanted to do. To do. Uh, they felt like it would, it would just be 
something that uh, Scott Bibler would want, and uh, they went the extra mile to, to set it up that way in there. Um, we are still waiting on the other two pieces of glass on the ends. Those are the coaches' uh, rooms um, for the, the home team and then the, the visiting team. We've got uh, uh, the sound system there. You can see the four speakers up there on the corners. And then there are also speakers on the light poles that point uh, towards the uh, opposing side. So we've got a new updated system that's, that's just going to be really nice. Um, and then we've also got speakers that point out towards the, the soccer field too. So um, thinking about the, the other thing there, you, you see the TV and then there are uh, five lights that we can turn on that will illuminate that. Um, it, it's just really going to look sharp. Uh, I know when the, the electrician set it up, he had turned it on, and, and folks that were uh, that came in uh, really commented on how how nice it looks. So um, that's a that's a nice added bonus that they that they thought of. Um, like I said, the the glass for those two windows it's it's going to ship here uh, at the end of the week, and it's it's a it's a day installation. So we'll knock on wood, we'll have it in there. So um, the, the next slide there, this is, uh, this is where we were before. Um, this was the, the visiting uh, bleachers. Uh, we had the, the huge uh, hedgerow there um, of, of trees. And um, just wanted to make note that the, the cross country team, this was part of their course running behind the bleachers there. And um, I tried to take the, the next picture from the same angle there um, just a couple things to point out. Um, if you see, if you can imagine, there's going to be a fence that runs from the tree line and it's going to run uh, to the bleachers there. There will be an opening behind the, the press box. So cross country really won't have to alter their course. We'll be able to keep that because they, they would really have to uh, make a huge adjustment in, in what they would do. And we can also, if, if vehicles need to get back behind there, that, that can happen. Uh, if you, you look at the concrete, um, you, you see there's kind of two different colors there. There's the worn part. That was where uh, the, the visiting bleachers were. So then we had to add uh, that, that concrete uh, that's closest to us and that wraps around uh, to, to the other side. So we, we poured another slab of concrete, and that's where those uh, soccer pit bleachers are located now. Um, and it's just a... It's a really neat situation to, to look at when you just see how the landscape has changed out there. Uh, the, the next slide kind of shows us um, when, when we were uh, putting this together in, inside. Um, from the concrete uh, at the bottom there to the concrete flooring at the, at the top, that is 19 feet. And then uh, it is stick built from the, the top there for, for the roof. So you see there's uh, there's 15 steps and then a landing and then 15 more steps. So um, it's, a, it's good exercise getting up there. But uh, it, it just kind of really shows, um, you know, the, the size of the, of the building. Um, you know, when you look at it from the parking lot or from the road, you really don't have an appreciation for how large it is until, until you get up there. So, um, that's we we just kind of wanted to show the inside as the construction occurred. This is the the view of the um, north end zone, and you you see the the panes there of, of glass. Uh, there's one seam uh, on this area, and then there's a there's another seam that, that we'll show here in a little bit. One thing that uh, that we also did this summer, um, we we resealed the walkway around uh, the entire football field. We knew that uh, we needed to do some patchwork in some areas, so uh, people coming around, uh, it'll, it, it's safe now. Um, this, uh, yeah, that picture and this picture both are taken from the second tier of in, inside the press box. So uh, you can see the, the front counter there where um, we'll have radio uh, folks on that, on that part, and then uh, this is the south uh, end zone. It, it, I decided to do both of those just to kind of gain an appreciation for 
how wide that that window is, and uh, and you you've got to take two pictures to, to get it in there. Um, the the next slide is looking out um, to the soccer field in uh, one of the, the back rooms there. You see uh, across over towards the um, bus garage there. You see two. Um, well, poles that have been put up, uh, that's where the soccer uh, scoreboard is going. So um, we've uh, we tested uh, the other scoreboard to make sure that the, it coincides and will work from uh, up there and, and transmits down to, to the field. And we will, as soon as D&D uh, uh, &D can get up and, and get that hung for the soccer team, they're, uh, they're on schedule. So. Um, really changing things out, out there too. You can see this is another view from uh, the other window that is on the on the back of the press box there. So um, just really changed the landscape of of that that area. This kind of gives a good um, depiction of, of that front counter and you see the second uh, tier there. Uh, that far doorway that, uh, that will be the, the Valley coaches. Uh, they, they will be in there. Um, so that's a, that's a really long counter. I know um, Sean Miller is, is working up there right now, working on the counter, uh, putting some outlets so we can run electrical through the, the counter down to those receptacles. Um, the, the next slide, uh, this is where I believe the newspaper um, and this area is carpeted. This was uh, built out of built out of wood, so they, they wanted to carpet this area. Um, they uh, they've been working on the paint. That's a that's metal uh, metal siding, and then the back wall there is is wood. Where um, I know uh, Steph and you see the state champs uh, sign. She's working on uh, some pictures and some sayings that, that they would like to put up there. Uh, on, on the family's behalf. And you, you get a good idea, the, the next slide, um, of just what that area looks like. That closet is where all the, the electronics will be uh, stored in terms of the PA, uh, the, the scoreboard, I think, will probably, um, the, the transmitter will probably be stored in there, but that's, that's a nice electrical closet where we can keep everything and we know where it's gonna be. I put this picture in here just uh, to talk about uh, a couple things. You, you see the, the, the road that um, will have some access back there to the, the press box for some folks and that's going to be regulated in terms of who can, who can drive back there. But as you, as you look down there at the, at the end of the road, kind of down by the baseball press box to, to the right of that, um, there, there was a very uh, wet area that uh, uh, it was pretty, Dwayne, how do you describe it? Other than wet. It was aquatic mire when it rained hard. It so. was, there you go. So um, we took the opportunity to um, run some drainage. The, our, our staff here, the, the maintenance department here, put a drain in there and they connected it over to the soccer field, which was the, the closest place that, that worked. So it was um, a real good situation in terms of addressing that issue. So multiple multiple things got addressed. The, the storage in this facility is, um, is great. I mean, you, you see there, I'm taking the picture from the, from the uh, overhead door, but uh, you know, we're, we're gonna be able to, to really have a place to, for, for things and uh, keep them organized. Um, and you, you see the stairs there. Uh, Craig Welding did the, uh, did, did the, um, the handrail for us there. It's just, uh, I know when we, uh, when Sean, uh, when they get totally finished, he's going to flip those uh, steps so the, the nice side is up, is my understanding. Uh, right now, they're, they're pretty beat up from the construction and things going up and down, so those will, those will be flipped there. Uh, the next picture is just the, the opposite angle there. You, you see the overhead door um, just from, from both angles. And then... Um, didn't have good light yesterday, but you can see the steel uh, going up there. Uh, the, the crew, the, the steel arrived on Friday, and uh, two semi uh, 
truckloads were, were waiting in the parking lot in the morning and um, everything was uh, taken apart and, and the crew is there. They've got a four-man crew that has put up uh, this first part of the structure. An additional crew will be coming on Wednesday. Uh, and they'll be working together. It'll pick up a, a lot of momentum then, putting the seats in and the, and the stairs and everything and finishing things finishing things out with uh, just how, the, 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 if the weather can cooperate with us. But uh, that's uh, that's where we're at at this point. Um, are those are the speakers over there playing on that? Yes, they are. Yep, you see some pointing um, over uh, towards the soccer and then towards the, uh, um, it, it'll be the visitor's bleachers now. So. Um, we just want to talk about the dedication ceremony. Um, we're looking at halftime of the of the Culver Military Academy game, and that's uh, Friday, the uh, August 19th, and kickoff is 7:30. Um, and then we're going to have an open house uh, the following day in the morning, from 9 a.m. Uh, to, to 11 a.m. So I know um, Steph Bibler, this this worked for her, and um, really uh, put a lot of time and uh, dedication into to, to making this a great facility. Do you have any questions? Uh, I'm glad to see the open house. Yeah, like, you know, people would like to look and go up and Yeah, see, yeah, we did. Definitely. I know I walked up through it Friday and I talked to Mr. Bob about it. Why don't we, uh, as, as a school, get that special steps and the upstairs carpeted I mean, for one, somebody go trip and fall on those stairs going up. They're gonna, they're gonna shed some skin on the shins. Mm -hmm. Carpet that. That's gonna help out a lot. Uh, what I think we'd probably like to do is to sit down with Steph Bibler and maybe talk through that with her um, to see what what really she wants us to do. I mean, they've kind of taken the lead on the design of the press box. I, I certainly would not mind seeing that. Done. I just want to make yeah. sure if we do yeah. something that it's they're okay with that. Right. And, we'll talk to them. Yeah. <clears throat> good idea. Though. Look nice. Is there any handicap accessibility to get up there? I'm thinking of Rita being able to get up there. Not at this point. Okay. We've had that discussion though. Yeah. Okay. There's been Rita was on the, about that. Rita was, Rita was on the project yeah. with with me and Stan and Lane. Some okay, other folks, and that was one of the concerns we had. We talked about putting an elevator or some kind of lift, and she's like, "As of right now, I don't need it." Right. And okay. She's thinking if she does, she's thinking of donating one of those. Uh, oh, chairs. chairs. Yeah. Of that putting that up herself. She says if it gets to the point where I still want to announce, and I can't get up the stairs, she goes, "I will probably donate to put a chair lift in for me." Okay. Uh, so it's just something that. Yeah, that's something about. everybody yeah. brought up because we don't want to limit Rita not. Yeah, right, right, right. What is the seating capacity of the new bleachers? It's comparable to the, the old. To, to, yeah. Yeah. It's actually wider. It's not as high, but it is wider. So it's it's very close. Our seating capacity as a whole is going to dwarf anybody in the area. Maybe more so still have more seating. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, from well, visitor side, visitor side increase tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> when they show up, they're going to be looking small compared to that. They're going to be looking like this. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 We'll go to item three, approval of the revision of the school board policy, the pest control policy. That's the policy that I brought to you guys uh, last month that uh, there was a minor revision to the previous policy. Uh, we'll bring that back to you this month for approval. Does anybody have any questions on that? No. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the pest control policy? To the school board? Yeah, motion. Todd makes that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, seconds. All in favor of approving the Pest control policy to the school board policy. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Not opposed. Motion carried. Go to item four, approval of the addition to the school board policy review and second audit of free and reduced lunch applications. 
that's also a policy that uh, we talked about last month. Um, it is uh, an addition to school board policy. We we'll bring it back to you this week for report. Anybody have any questions on the uh, train reduced lunch audit? Yeah. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the review and second audit of the school and reduced lunch policy? I'll make that motion. Brian makes that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Tom seconds. All in favor of approving the review and second audit of the school free and reduced lunch shift location, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Is there any other? That's it. Old business. We will move to new business. Okay. We have with us tonight uh, Miranda Feiger. Miranda is our project lead away teacher. And uh, I think you want to uh, talk to us a little bit about a couple of things, Miranda. Um, Chrissy's going to pass out to you um, just two things. One are the modules that we're going to do at Mintone and Akron this year. Um, each grade level, K-5, through five, will get to do one engineering module and one computer science. Um, and then she has another one that just, they're not the same, but it shows you the standards that Project Lead the Way, some of these modules will cover. They're not just your science standards. They're going to cover math. They're going to cover you. language arts. They're going to cover the new computer science standards. So we're really going to hit a lot with these kids. Um, Project Lead the Way is going to allow them to really think outside the box and not me just teach them, you memorize it and spit it back. But here's the problem. How do we work together and solve it? They are going to become crit excuse me, critical thinkers and engineers. Um, I went this summer to South Bend for three days, and um, I didn't get to go through every module, but I got to go through one in kinder, couple in kindergarten, third grade, um, fifth grade. Um, they are really, really fun and really cool. Um, I can't wait to see these kids in there um, and building and creating these things. K through two, yes, they're creating and they're solving problems. Um, the biomed one, which we are not doing with them, um, they have to design a cast. That's the big problem. A little girl falls off and she breaks her arm. And so you need to take these supplies and create a cast. And it can't just be pretty. It has to be waterproof and comfortable and all of these um, other criteria. The one we are going to do with kindergarten and first grade this year, um, we read the three little pigs, and it's all about structure and function. So why would you want to build your, build your house this way? What's the function of it? And I actually got in my kit an air compressor to blow their houses down. <laughs> um, it's really cool. And then at the end, the um, little girl wants a paintbrush that it, she just gets tired of the same lines. And so she gets to create her own paintbrush that can do it all. And this is one we got to try. And they basically just set out a table of any craft supply you could think of and you could use as much as you want as little as you want and so these kids actually put them together dowel rods and styrofoam balls and feathers and pom poms and bubble wrap anything you can think of and then they actually get to paint with them and test them and then they will share back hey this really worked or i chose the feather because i thought it would leave feather prints and really it just leaves a really thin line um, so it's going to lead to some great discussions some great teamwork um, i brought with me here this is a base model robot. Our fifth graders are actually going to build robots this year. And fifth grade will also get to um, have, we're going to have a robotics team at Akron and at Mentone. Um, not sure how many competitions yet we'll go to. just kind of depends on um, what's available in our area. Um, but these go. <laughs> so like I said, this is pretty basic. They will, um, they can add claws, they can add like scoops to them, um, all sorts of things. And it basically drives like a um, zero turn lawnmower. So <laughs> I've had a third grader put this one together, actually in about an hour, and he drove it all around school. So um, that was exciting. The Tech Point um, grant allowed me to go again to a training um, in Logansport. I went. And it was all on this robot and the game itself that um, the robotics team will be competing with. When I thought when I thought I was going, I thought it was just build a robot, and that is so not in my element. Um, to do what? And so they actually have this game. It's an eight foot by four foot area, and they explain that um, when we go to a competition around here, it's a team tournament. So even though Mentone and Akron are rivals, we could get paired up, and you're not rivals for the five minutes you are on each other's team and so I have some blue balls on my side that I need to get over to you and you have some orange balls that you need to get over here but that's just not it we have to climb a bridge and stabilize ourselves we have to be able to lift them and place them 
Um, so these kids are really going to push themselves and challenge each other. Um, our classes start Wednesday, and I've had already one entire class stop before recess, um, and that being the building project outside to see what was in my room. And I had multiple um, upper grades stop in and ask, and some third graders that are very upset because they won't see me till January. Um, but the plan is I will be at Akron for nine weeks, come to Mentone, excuse me, Mentone, back to Akron and back to Mentone. So both elementaries, every student will get at least two modules. Great. Awesome. So we'll see what battle bots. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we have things to do. Maybe not this year. It was uh, the national championship oh, for was awesome. on Thursday. Yeah. 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 It was the national championship was on ESPN a couple weeks ago. I recorded it, and that's yeah. something. If you keep winning, you would be able to go to that. And then Vex doesn't do like it's not really battle bot type. They do um, a team, which is what I talked about, and then they can do a driver competition. So your kids can drive and try to beat the best time. And then they have a programming competition, so they can program it to set the remote down, walk away, and can it complete the task in the shortest amount of time. So um, we're, this year I hope to do, obviously, the team one and the driver one, um, and we'll just kind of see how the kids take it if they want to try the programming. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. I wish we had something like that. <laughs> That's what I said. How many kids? Um, we are up to 13. Um, hopefully, Mentone will also receive a grant, and then we will have 14 kids. And they, um, the kids are recommended one kid per four students. So we have about an. I have enough right now to do both fifth grade classes at the same time without having to just be all in the right panel. Great. Great. We need the uh, boards. Facebook boards approval of oh. the extra body kit awarded to Project Lead the Way Act. I'll make that motion. Yeah. Is there a second? Oh, second. second. Uh, Todd seconds the motion to approve the uh, grant for the Tech Point grant. All in favor of approving the uh, grant for the robotic kits, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Good luck. Yes. We'll, we're waiting for battle bots. <laughs> Item two, approved health insurance benefits for all full-time regular bus route drivers. Just a little background here. Uh, about three years ago, the board voted to no longer provide health insurance to full-time bus route drivers hired after January the 1st of 2013. Uh, those people were considered Class C drivers. Uh, they were then paid a daily rate of $20. $20 more than the Class A drivers who receive benefits um, who are eligible for the same insurance, and that includes medical, dental, and vision. Um, and they receive those benefits at the same cost as full-time classified personnel. Now, due to the challenge of recruiting quality bus driving candidates, and it's not unique to Tiffany Valley, everybody is having that challenge, uh, the administration would recommend that we offer this benefit to our current Class C drivers and any new drivers that are hired from this point forward. Uh, class C drivers that would choose to become a Class A driver would then see their daily rate return <coughs> of a Class A driver. Uh, the current value of our health insurance benefit for a family plan is $20,880. A uh, single plan is $8,352. And the school corporation contributes about 75% of that cost. So uh, we also then have high deductible health plans available at a lower cost. So uh, a recommendation to the board is that uh, our class C full-time route drivers as well as new drivers be allowed to uh, get our health insurance uh, effective immediately. Is there any questions for Mr. Bob? Yeah, Dave, I'd like to go ahead and just table this for this month and bring it back next month just for further uh, consideration and and all all of us would be here to vote on this this matter. Just for a table for this month and move it into next. Todd makes a motion to table this for a, a month. Is there a second on this motion? I'll second that. All in favor of tabling this for another month, signify by saying aye. 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 Yes, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I talked to Stan. Stan's okay with it, so, I mean, but if you want his vote, then that's fine with me, too. 
Are we, are we, are we short of bus drivers now? Are we looking? I mean, is Lyle still have to drive around? We're good right now. I can say I talked to him last way. week and he said right at this moment we're okay. He was driving today, was he? Yeah. Was he? And I'm fine with waiting a month. I think it's important that we get good bus drivers, and we always used to have. When I first got home, we had to wait. Yeah. Uh, people who wanted to drive the bus full time for us. The reason being was we had offered insurance. And every school in the area is putting signs up and ads in the paper <laughs> needing bus drivers. So I think it's a great thing to do. Plus, I mean, it's a very we put a lot of responsibility on a bus driver. Calling our kids around, being safe, driving in fog, snow. When I like down south, when there's snow on the road, we can't to school. We keep going. So I like to see good quality drivers. All right, well, we'll table this. And we'll be on next month's agenda. Is there any other business? It's about our first day of school. How'd it go? First day of school was great. Um, you know, it's. It's kind of different this year, um, you know, I, I, I try to relate and um, think about where I was my first day of high school. Uh, you can just see that that look of sheer terror of, <laughs> what am I going to do, the bell just rang. They're going to kick me out of school. You no, know, you're going to be okay, just take a deep breath. But um, yeah, we had school pictures today, um, a little bit different, how them on the first day of school, but it was alright. Um, everybody got to their classes okay. You know, everybody was doing doing what they needed to do to get through the day. Getting ready for the football game. Need to get a little bit more uh, organized as far as uh, the cheer block goes. Are you in charge of that? No. <laughs> no. Now I I will gladly give my opinion on some things. <laughs> like, Wait, no, this isn't a good idea. I think you're going to get no more <laughs> um, But, yeah, no, it, it, it'll be a good year. It'll be a good year. Great. So you're looking forward to your senior year then, right? Yeah. Good. Enjoy. It's going to be a little fast. Enjoy. It'll be too fast. And then, uh, what's your plans after school, do you know? Uh, definitely looking at um, Ball State. Uh, so you're going to be that next year, you'll be that freshman one, what the heck? Yeah, and then the much. teacher's going to say, this is class such and such, yeah. and you're going to say, wrong class. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in there. We go to the other side of campus. <laughs> yeah. That's much better school than Purdue, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, get getting nasty. Do we have another? Uh, person coming we will we'll next month. Uh, okay. Yes. And I gotta get school started, started first. first. I said so, yeah, yeah. we gotta them identify that to yeah. go through an application. Yeah. Awesome. I'll, I'll make sure I send regular text messages. There you go. Actually, they yeah. set that up on my phone. This is a regular. All right. Yeah. Nothing else. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.